All right, hey everybody, it is July. I think it's July 3rd. Yes, I believe it's July 3rd, which means it is plastic free July. So being someone who has built uh, basically an entire life around being underwater and exploring our wonderful, beautiful underwater world, it has become more important to me to be more conscious of the things that I do in my everyday life that could be negatively impacting um, not only the oceans, but just all of the waterways in general. I think it's important to remember for those of us who started out landlocked or are still landlocked, that even if you aren't by the ocean, that you can still have an impact on the ocean and that an impact on your streams, rivers, lakes, etc., are also just as important. Another thing that I want to touch on is the challenge of sustainability. It can be incredibly difficult um, to even make simple changes sometimes and seeking perfection is nearly impossible. So while I find it incredibly important to protect our natural world, I want to remind you that sometimes you just have to do your best and that is enough. You have to keep in mind that everybody has different limitations and accessibility and all sorts of other challenges and that it's not always possible to make all the changes in the world and you, like I said, cannot be perfect. It's basically next to impossible. So I just wanted to bring this up because as I started my journey and looking into different things that I could do to be better for the environment, um, it kind of came very overwhelming to me at first because it just seemed to have very harsh boundaries and a lot of it was so far from being affordable or accessible or within my realm of capability. Um, so it felt a little bit like giving up but I've ultimately found a few things that are great switches for me, so I'm gonna talk about those today. As well, I have run into a lot of things that I have tried out and didn't ultimately work for me. So there will be a part two to this video going over the sustainable swaps that I have tried and failed so that maybe you don't have to try them or maybe you have an alternative that you can recommend to me. I would love that. So let's go ahead and get into my successes. And then if you want to stick around for part two, don't forget to be subscribed so that you will get notifications and you won't miss out on that one. All right, so let's dive right into it. So the first one, let's start out super, super easy and something that pretty much everyone can achieve, which is a water bottle. This is my one water bottle. I've added a bunch of fun stickers to it. I got a bunch of these stickers off of Amazon. I will link those below. Very easy change. I also want to remind you that what you have already is more sustainable than going out and buying something else. Okay, so this is the water bottle that I had. So I'm gonna keep using this water bottle until its life is over. You can see I've dropped it, indented it, but ultimately it works the way it needs to work. Is this company super sustainable? I have honestly no idea. Is this bottle made of any sort of um, recycled materials or anything like that? Also, I have no idea because it's what I already had, okay? So just keep that in mind. You don't need to go out and buy a new water bottle that's made of recycled ocean plastics, blah, blah, blah. If you already have one in your home, use it. Number one, super easy. So next we have reusable grocery and or produce bags. This is another swap that is actually incredibly easy. The only challenge of it is getting into the habit of remembering to bring the bags. But once you have the bags at the store, super, super easy. So. So I have one tote that was sent to me by 12 Tides, and then I also have a bag of bags that just has a bunch of these simple, I'm gonna have to set this here, just very simple sacks. But yeah, like I said, the biggest challenge with this is just remembering to bring them. Um, usually what I would do is keep a couple of these in my car, so just in case I was already out and about and wanted to stop into a store to get something, then they were already in my car. But otherwise, I just 
you know, you make it part of your routine and your habit to grab your bags before you go grocery shopping. These will completely eliminate the use for those single use plastic bags at the grocery store. It's actually a lot more countries who are starting to ban single use plastic, which I think is fantastic. So if you're in a place that already does that, then maybe this is part of your routine already. Otherwise getting into the habit of it, highly recommend. How much more can I say about a simple sack? I don't know. But that is a super, super easy swap that I have made and haven't gone back since. It's been probably a couple years now that I have not used plastic bags. Okay, now I have a few laundry items and then a few bathroom items. Let's start with laundry. So the first one that I have is these wool dryer balls. Basically these are wool balls that, and there's six of them, and you just put them all in with your laundry and they kind of help toss everything in the dryer so that your clothes, um, you know, get distributed evenly in the dryer so that they can dry more efficiently. Um, and then it also helps with static. So it's going to kind of break up the static, I guess, in the, dryer but also I have sensitivity to fragrance and dryer sheets and laundry detergent and these kinds of things tend to have a lot of fragrance so dryer balls have been great for me if you are somebody who wants like a little bit of a fragrance touch I've heard people who take essential oils and they just drip a couple of essential oils onto a couple of the balls before they throw them in there that way they can get some extra little scent boost to their their laundry but I am not that person so dryer balls I've also used these for years now and will not ever look back so the next laundry item I have is a stain stick. It comes just in this little cardboard box. It's just a stick. So basically it's made of coconut oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, essential oil, and borax into just this like waxy stick. So basically I just get it a little wet and then rub it on to whatever I need to get some extra, extra cleaning power, any stains, etc and then toss it in with my laundry. And that's pretty much it. And it works for everything I've ever used it for, so easy peasy stain remover. So now these are a few of my favorite swaps. So first is a bamboo toothbrush. Bristles are very soft. I tend to brush my teeth very, very hard. So um, I need to have soft bristled brushes so that I don't like destroy my gums. This one is like a, comes with a little bit of a caveat. Overall, I mean, it works just like any other toothbrush. So I've never switched back. However, the bristles are not entirely as like sustainable as they make you think. The handle of the toothbrush is bamboo, but the bristles, I don't think they're plastic, but they're not actually like compostable. So, Okay, these final two are like my holy grail. Regardless of if you wanted to be more eco-friendly or anything like that, these are literally just better than the alternative. So I'm like kind of annoyed I didn't have them for my entire life, but regardless, I have switched to them now. So a huge favorite of mine is, I know it seems so ridiculous, but it's this floss. Um, so this is a silk floss. I think this brand used to do cotton and now they've switched to a silk. I did prefer the cotton to the silk, but I still very much like it. The plastic flosses like make my gums bleed so badly. Now they have silk. It's a little bit um, tougher than the cotton, but it's still a lot more delicate than the plastic flosses. I floss all the time now. I am a routine flosser. My dentist would be very proud of me for my flossing habits going forward. It's because of this. And the very last one is a safety razor. Oh my God. I cannot even begin to explain to you how stupid I feel for buying plastic razors for as much as my life as I did once I switched to this. This looks terrifying. And that is what put me off of switching to it for the longest time. They call it a safety razor, but it looks anything but like this is just like a lot, right? Once you use it, I promise it is 
far less intimidating than it seems. Basically how it works is you just twist the handle off. You just set the handle aside. Then it has these two pieces right here. And then this is the blade. It's literally like a super thin, flimsy piece of I don't know this piece of metal and it um, is the like sharp on the edges and that's where your blade is so once it gets pinched between these two pieces of metal then you have a razor on this side and this side so that's great for a couple of reasons so first being that you like double the amount of usage out of each blade that you would compared to a regular razor. So we have a regular razor, you just have the one blade edge. Um, now you have two, so you get twice as much use out of each blade, being able to use both edges of it. The other advantage of it is that these are cheap as hell. This is a box of a hundred blades, a hundred. One, zero, zero, one hundred. And this cost me like eight bucks. Eight freaking dollars when i found that out if you only knew how pissed off i was at buying 25 dollar packs for like two razor heads on my freaking gillette whatever seven dollars 100 100 blades did i say that yet 100 blades i've had this box for years years and I haven't even used half of them. Oh my God, I just thought of another swap that I use. That's like also one of my favorites and in the bathroom. I'll go get that one in a little bit. And that one's for the ladies. Sorry guys. I have one more swap. This one's for the ladies. So if you're a guy and you're weird about this kind of stuff, then you might wanna just dip out at this point. But if you um, are a lady, so my last swap is for those of us who menstruate. So if you are a dude and you don't care for that, then you can go ahead and dip on out. Thanks for sticking around. I um, hope you find some of this helpful. Otherwise, if you are a menstruating human, I have a great swap for you as well. So I will go get that and I'll be right back. Okay, and the last one is a menstrual cup. Holy crap, this is another one that I'm like, I'm so furious. I did not have this from the very first period I ever had. So basically it's just a little silicone cup. When you put this in correctly, you will not leak. You won't leak. You don't have to think about leaking ever. The trauma I could have avoided in middle school and high school from not leaking. Would've been nice, anyway. So you don't have to worry about leaking. Do you want me to just put this away rather than swing it around to your face? I'll do that, you're welcome. <laughs> um, especially also if you're out scuba diving or doing some things like that where there's not really facilities, um, you can put this bad boy in and have it in all day long. You will not leak, you will not get toxic shock. You don't have to worry about it, a non-issue. Now, while a lot of these have been almost, if not better than their counter parts that are more wasteful, there are some swaps that I have tried that have been massive fails. So I will do a part two video on that. So stick around if you're interested. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not already. If you have more recommendations of plastic free alternatives that you have tried go ahead and leave those in the comments below i would love to hear what you've tried out some of my gums um because i'm like trying so hard to get my mouth clean i should probably not gesture like that <laughs> oh my god okay anyway <laughs> Ah, Olivia. Okay, and the very last one is a safety. <laughs> How safe? How safe though? What's 20 times five, 100? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, yep. Oh my God, someone sent me back to school. My degree literally behind me as I do mental math, or as I count multiplication on my hand. It's fine. Everything's fine.
get one of those mics that doesn't have a cord on it because this is a pain in the ass.